All right, so today, part two of the LT1 engine build, I'm going to put the pistons in. Now, um, the machine shop, they usually have these bolts tight. And you can put this in a vise with some cardboard on each side and break those loose with a ratchet and socket. But if you hold it in your hand, you can do an impact. But don't. I see some people, they'll stick a bar in here and then turn it with a, a socket and a ratchet. And that's not good. Don't do that. But uh, I just hold it in the hand, hit it with an impact, and they come right off. But I'm going to take these off. I'm going to clean this real good. And I'm going to put... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the bearings on the caps. I'm going to take the caps off, break the nuts loose, take the caps off, clean all the area, the flat area, this area, and I'm going to go ahead and put the bearings in. And the bearings, they go on the tangs there. So as long as they're the tangs on the bearing uh, and the, uh, as long as the tangs are in them grooves, you should be good to go. But uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. And then uh, wool up the pistons real good. Wipe a little bit of the Vaseline out of the cylinders. All the cylinders up. And uh, just use oil and put the pistons in. Oh, so something else I forgot to mention. When I put this thing together, I did put one of them dial indicators with a magnet. And I put it like say here and I put it on the journal of the crank and you push the crank backwards and forwards and it actually moves a little which is called your end play so your end play I always have to look these numbers up but the end play is 2,000 to 6,000 all right just a little bit more on the end play the uh the rear the very rear bearing that big the big thick one that's the one that controls the end play and uh you can use a filler gauge back there in between the crank itself and that rear thrust bearing. You can use a filler gauge as well. But I've read some sides say two thousandths to six thousandths, some say three thousandths to eleven thousandths. So as long as you're in within those numbers, you should be fine on that. And if your in play is too tight, you can actually sand the the ends of those bearings down a little bit to get the correct end play that you need. Just make sure that it's nice and flat and, and when you're doing it. And use really fine sandpaper, really fine sandpaper. You can actually take both of the uh, both of the bearings and put them together and put a make sure they're perfectly flat and perfectly straight, butt it up against each other and take a screw clamp and tighten them together. And then make sure you're on a flat surface, put the sandpaper on a flat surface, and just kind of run the bearing back and forth. But that will that's how some people uh, set the end play if it's too tight. Now also on pistons that only have two valve reliefs, those go at the top. Now if you got two valve reliefs that are different sizes, the intake valve is the big one so on a small block chevy it goes exhaust intake intake exhaust exhaust intake intake exhaust so if you have the two valve reliefs on the pistons different sizes then the big ones will go here on they'll face each other on this and then they'll face each other on this and again they go at the top but we're dealing with four valve relief pistons, so it doesn't matter. Two valve relief pistons, it does matter which way they go in. And again, small valve, big valve relief. Big valve relief, small valve relief. Small valve relief, big valve relief. Big valve relief, small valve reliefs. Because, as you can see on the heads... Just by going off the exhaust port on the head sitting over here, you can see right there, exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust, exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust. LS is different. It's exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake. It just depends on what side of the motor you're looking at, I guess, but 
you'll see the intake valve is bigger. Those are the intake valves. And the head bolts on like that. And those valves come straight down at that angle. So the valve reliefs have to be at the top because this, the top of the valve is where it would normally hit because this is right up against the block. We'll have to clean those up real good and we're going to change the springs and studs on those. But anyway, forgot to mention that last time. And like I said, the machine shop already honed this. There is a gray area where the ring comes to the top, but a flat area, but they honed it and said it was okay. So I'm rolling with it. Now, if I honed it myself, I like to use the, the hones with the, with the straight arms on it. And then you got those ball hones that are just a bunch of little balls. I don't like those so much because those that go into the into the um, into the spots where it's where it's out of round, and it won't tell you that your cylinder is out of round. Whereas the straight ones, they won't go into the out of round spots, and they'll say they'll tell you that there's an out of round spot. If it ain't hitting that spot, then that little spot's out of round, and that might give you an indication that your uh, your cylinder probably needs bored out but anyway I got this one all cleaned up and I'm gonna go ahead and install the bearings on them and these are all the same so as long as you match up the tang with the tang push them down in there try to get as flat as you can I was way off by hand, but just put them down in there. Tang lines up to the tang. I got that off too. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to do two hands, but anyway, we'll go ahead and put both of those in there. And then I'm gonna put oil on these. I'm just gonna put oil on them. I'm gonna put some assembly lube on these. And then I'm gonna get some rubber hose that'll fit over that. I'm gonna put some rubber hose over those. And I'm gonna put the piston in again. This is number eight, so it's going to go in the very back of the crank. So, in front of the motor over here, I need to have this part up against the back of the crank. So, and then again, the tang is down. So, this is number eight, it'll go in just like that. And then, once I do that, I'm going to oil that up real good. I'm going to clean the Vaseline out of the cylinder. A little bit and off the the um, rod journal put that all this up real good put it in a ring compressor and start putting that one in all right so I got the cylinder all cleaned up I got the journal all cleaned up I put the journal at the very bottom and um, I've got rubber pieces that way the bolts on the rods won't hit that and hurt it and then um, you can't see it, but I lubed up the bearing. I put oil on the piston. I put it in a ring compressor. And I tightened it up as tight as I could. Now I'm just going to take a hammer and hold this and lightly tap on this until it goes in the cylinder again. This is number eight. So it's going to go right there. So make sure the beveled end of the rod is this side. Flat side is this side. And... Um, Again, the tang should be facing the oil pan. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock that in there. This is the hammer I'm gonna use. Some of them have a wooden handle. This has a rubber handle. I'm just gonna use the back of the hammer right there, like that. Now I need to hold that ring compressor with one hand as I tap it in with the other hand, so I won't be able to take a video of that. And there you go, it slid right in. Now, we're just gonna push it back down here Make sure to line the bolts up. Just wanting to go that way. So we'll bring the, yeah, like that. You have to line this up as you push it. 
but uh, you should be able to push it by hand. So I'm going to go ahead and push it back down there and put it on the saddle. All right, so we got it the bottom of the rod with one hand and pushed on the piston with the other hand and got that all the way down on there. Then we can just pull these out, these rubber pieces out that were to protect us from hitting anything. Well, those weren't that hard to put on. <laughs> Let me get two hands, I'll pull those off. All right, so they pulled off pretty easy. Once I had both hands on them, but see here, beveled side up against the crank, right there. Flat side over here. And the tangs right there, which is the one closest to the oil pan. And uh, we'll go ahead and put a, Put all the pistons in that way and then um, I'm going to lube up the cap again the taps go tang, tang to tang they butt up against each other and then we'll torque down the, uh, the rod bolts all right here's the cap lubed it up there's the there's the angled side here's the flat side uh, the two tabs go together so there's the other tab, tab to tab, angle side against crank, flat side in the middle. And the same thing when you put this one on, the angle side goes up against the crank, the flat side in the middle, tang goes down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some oil on these threads and put the bolts down, put bolts on there and torque it down. All right, that one's on. It's not torqued down, I'm, I'm, it's just hand tighten. I'm gonna hand tighten all of them and torque them down together after I get them all in. But um, also another thing, when you before you put the piston in your um, ring compressor, make sure, double check, make sure that all your piston ring grooves are on different sides, especially the top and the middle. And um, this is the little ring compressor I use just a cheap one you can get from any parts store I mean it works pretty good but they have them ones that, that fit the cylinder bore size of the motor you're working with and they're like angled so as you knock them in it compresses the rings as it goes in and I hear those work really good but I've never used one before they're like 30 bucks each so if you're see that one would do any size I forgot what it goes up to, but it goes up to a certain size and goes down to a certain size. But those ones that I was talking about that are angled and go in as you knock the piston, compress the ring as you knock the piston in, they're like 30, 40 bucks and you got to buy one for each size board you're messing with. So this is a standard board. I would buy a four inch one if I was building, when I built, when, when Chris built his 383, he used one. So he used a, he used a 4.03. But uh, anyway, yeah, we're going to do all the rest of them like that and get them all in. Got a little bit of glare here with the sun shining in. But also, sometimes these caps, <laughs> they're a little stuck on there. What I do is I just tap on them with a 2x4 or a piece of wood, or you can tap them up against a wooden workbench, but I wouldn't hit those with metal, especially in the front or back area. You can on the sides. You can tap them with a hammer on the sides, but then you got to do kind of wiggle them to get them off, too. It's easier with two hands, anyway. But yeah. And again, when you get your crank back from the machine shop, if you take it to have it polished or anything, or ground down or anything, make sure. You order the right bearings again the crank was standard standard on the rod and the mains so these are standard bearings which they'll say std on them now the machine shop they'll either grind it 10 20 30 whatever just uh make sure when you order bearings for your rod and mains that you know the know um if if the crank's been you know 10 under or on the mains or you know 20 on the rod sometimes they'll go 
10 on the main, 20 on the rods, or whatever. Just make sure that you tell them. I'm, if, if, if yours was uh, 10 on the main, 20 on the rod, make sure when you order your rebuild kit that you tell them that you're, you need bearings for 10 on the main and 20 on the rod. And uh, that's thousands, and they'll know what you're talking about. Make sure you get the right bearings again. Same thing for the rings. This is standard size bore, so went with standard size four inch rings for this build for LT1. Something else I also wanted to mention. There's uh, floating pins and then there's press pins. These press through the rod itself and then they turn in the piston. So that... There's floating pins too that, that go in here. And then you got like a little retainer clip you put right here, which is what I got on my motor. And I'm pretty sure Chris has it on his, but you just push the pin through, oil it up, push it through. And then you put a, um, you put a retaining clip inside here and a retaining clip inside here for the floating pins. But the press pins, the machine shop does it and they just press them through there. And then the rod holds it. The rod holds the pin itself, and then the, it just moves around in the piston. But yeah, I wanted to mention that. All right, I got it all together. I torqued the rod bolts all down with oil on them to 45 foot pounds. And I did check with plastic gauge, and they're all within two to three thousandths. Which works for me, I guess, 2.5 thousandths is about where they should be. But um, plastic gauge showed right in between 2 and 3 thousandths, so everything's good there. And uh, everything, everything looks good. Again, most important thing, make sure your ring gaps on your pistons are all separated. Um, that ring compressor... You don't want to put it all the way down on the piston. I just put these over the ring area and I leave <coughs> about that much of the piston hanging out of it and to line it up in there. And then uh, when you push that up in there, make sure that you got some rubber pieces on the end of your rod bolts so you don't hit the crank and score up the crank. On uh, number one, I actually forgot to put it on and Luckily, I had the, I had the, I had it out of the way. So also, before you put the piston in, have it up here. You know, have this part all the way out here. So if you do forget, because if you ram the end of that rod bolt into the crank, your crank's done. Um, if if you ain't lucky enough to be able to polish it out. But yeah, there it is. So I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna put a bunch of oil in the cylinders and. Turn it over a little bit, that way the cylinders stay nice and lubricated and don't rust. But uh, that's where we're at. We got the pistons in it. Just need the cam and the timing set. I need to clean up the heads and put um, new uh, springs in and stuff like that on the heads. Those heads are aluminum, but they, they got surface rust on them. As you seen earlier in the video, but yeah. When I get the cam and time and chain set and stuff like that and get the stuff to work on the heads, we'll go ahead and start working on that. I'll make videos of that. There you go.